Welcome back to Michigan Stadium, the big house, as we get set for kickoff here on this Saturday. Delaware State and the Michigan Wolverines. With more on today's matchup, we bring in the third member of our broadcast team, Brent Stover. Brent? Super Bowl, Al LeVan, the head coach, telling us yesterday, we didn't come here to the big house for a moral victory. We came to win a football game. Now, for Michigan, clearly, I don't think it's humanly possible to get as jacked up for a game like this as you would a normal Big Ten conference game. But Rich Rodriguez told us, you know what, there's a level that we expect every time that our players take the football field to play hard, to play physical, to do what we're supposed to do. So, Matt, maybe more today than any other game on the schedule here in 2000. 2009, there's a lot to be graded other than what ends up on the scoreboard after four quarters. Yeah, they certainly do want to execute, as Coach Rich Rodriguez told us yesterday, and this is a team that's turned it over seven times over the last two weeks. Next week, of course, Penn State. Big Ten college football is brought to you in high definition to buy Phillips HD, available at Target, Walmart, and Sam's Club. And you may wonder, how did this game come about? Well, when Rich Rodriguez, Mark, took this program over, there was an open date. He told us yesterday they went around looking for an FBS team. No one was willing to come here. Everybody wanted a home and home. They went to the MAC. They wanted a home and home as well. So then they started talking to some FCS schools to the likes of the University of Maine and UMass and then also Delaware State. And there was a connection there between a couple of assistant coaches and that's how this game came about. Now we expect Michael Shaw to be the starting running back. Carlos Brown is out because of concussion. He missed last week's game. Brandon Miner, he's had a banged up ankle all fall. He did run for 95 yards last week. He will not go today, Mark. Yeah, and Brandon Miner, that's a guy that this team is really based upon. Their running game is physical, aggressive. Brandon Miner brings that to the table. Now with the other backs, with Carlos Brown, who's not playing again today, he's got their longest pass from scrimmage, and he's got their longest rush from scrimmage. They're going to miss him today. I think they can get away with it today, but they're going to need him next week for Penn State. Tate Forcia didn't practice Monday, Tuesday. So much controversy created over this past week because Denard Robinson went in to handle those final two series for the Michigan Wolverines on the road at Iowa. Later came out that Tate Forcier had a concussion. But Rich Rodriguez told us he's been rotating quarterbacks throughout the course of the week. No controversy to him. No issue. You will see both quarterbacks today. Temperature 44 degrees. And mostly cloudy, and how about that win? May play a little bit of a role. This is nice. This is football weather, man. Oh, you told me earlier, Mark, that it's football weather for everybody but the football players. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no question. <laughs> and we are all set here on this Saturday for the first ever meeting between these two schools. Getting by, slipped up, should have now picked up. And brought back to the five-yard line, Leron Moore, after Brian Wright booted it. Yeah, now, Leron could have taken a knee there because that was a muff. He didn't have possession. He could have taken a knee. I'm sure he didn't know the rules, so he decided to come out. Change at quarterback because of an injury. Anthony Glaude last week suffered a concussion, and so Nick Elko, a redshirt <laughs> freshman, from Maryland comes in, and what a tough place to start. The handoff to Deshaun Jones, and he is met in the backfield, and a loss. Now it's time for the Rotel Velveeta starting lineups because you can't start your game day without the famous queso dip. And for Delaware State, the largest crowd that they've ever played in front of, 29,000. So can you imagine what it feels like for these youngsters? Deshaun Jones, the running back, getting the start over Tyree McQueen. It's going to bring up now second and 11 for the Hornets. Jones can't get outside in a swarming defense by the Michigan Wolverines as Mike Martin comes in to make the stop, and he is one big physical player. There is a flag on the play. Going to go against Delaware State. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield on the offense. That penalty is declined. Third down. 
The Michigan defense in for the Michigan Wolverines up front. Graham, he is something else. He has 10 total uh, tackles for loss. And then you look at that linebacking core. They love Stevie Brown and all that he can do. And just no place to go for Delaware State. And they are going to be backed up big time on fourth down. You look at the secondary, the walk-on Jordan Kovacs. His father was a walk-on here at Michigan. Lou and his son following in his footsteps. It's always nice when you see a father-son. Oh. You know, that, it, it, Michigan's one of those places. I know there's a lot of schools across the country that do that. They have a lot of, you know, family traditions here, a lot of the same family members coming to this school and playing here. Nick Lochner, Al Levan, head coach at Delaware State, said this guy has been a major plus for us, and that one was nearly blocked. And Odom's telling everybody to stay away from it, and a solid punt as he was backed up all the way. That's tough, man. That's hard for punters. I don't, you know, I don't envy them one bit to be in the back of the end zone, especially at a place like the Big House. That's a tough thing to do, your first punt of the game. The punter for, for Delaware State really is their best special team player, though. Yep. He does a great job. 41-yard punt. And Tate Forcier will lead the Wolverines out onto the field. As we mentioned, he... Because of that shoulder, he hasn't practiced over the last three weeks on Monday and Tuesdays, and then you add the concussion in. So it'll be interesting to see how long we see him go here on this day, and they give it off on the inside of Michael Shaw, and Shaw tries to stretch it outside and picks up a couple. Now it's time for the Velveeta, Rotel Velveeta starting lineups because you can't start your game day without the famous queso dip. And that offensive line, Rich Rodriguez telling us that they are the calming effect uh, to this offense as they go outside now to Greg Matthews. And Matthews is going to have a first down and a lot more. A young defense for Delaware State. So watch out. Of course, this is a young Michigan Wolverines team, a pickup of 14 yards. First down and 10 inside the 30 of the Hornets and Tate Forcier under center. High formation. And the give. Shaw bouncing it outside and he's going to pick up three on the play. And so here is the defense of Delaware State defensive coordinator Rayford Petty. And up front, they really like the play of Dunn and Hurst along with Carroll. And the linebacking core, well, they got three new guys in there from a year ago. They suffered their first losing season <laughs> under Al Levan last year at Delaware State. Just three seasons ago, they won 10 games in the FCS. Bringing up second and long in 4CA to the near side. And Odoms has plenty of room. And he is out of bounds at the two-yard line. That's a nice play. And what I like about this drive is Tate can come in. He can come in and make some easy throws. That's what this offense is based on. Nice, easy throws. Gets the ball to Odoms. One of the team playmakers. I know we talked to Coach Rod yesterday. He talked about Odoms a lot. One of the playmakers. Good for Tate. Good for him to build some confidence after a week ago. Show him that his arm is feeling better. This is a good drive for Michigan. 25-yard pickup. You know, here it is, Delaware State plopped in the middle of the Big Ten schedule. But because this is a young Michigan Wolverine team, close to 70% of the roster are freshmen and sophomores. This works out well for them. And on the opening drive, a touchdown by the sophomore from Ohio, Michael Shaw. And Shaw gets his second touchdown of the season for the Wolverines. And so a very well-executed first series for the Wolverines. I mean, that couldn't go any better. It couldn't go any better for the those guys a great defensive stand come out with a drive go right down the field and score and so on now for the the extra point and it is good here it is Michael Shaw is second touchdown of the season and the Wolverines on the board every
Big Ten Network football presented by the United States Marine Corps and Michigan leads the Big Ten in scoring offense averaging 33 points the game on the board here seven nothing win a trip to the bowl game of your choice enter the Rotel bowl bound sweeps on your mobile text Rotel to two zero two eight four and maybe you'll be bowl bound just like Mark Campbell back in the day boom boom and so right getting set to kick it off here and Delaware State back with Moore and Tarpley and that opening drive really what you would expect from the Michigan Wolverines Mark. Yeah absolutely but you know for Delaware State this is going to be a huge drive for them because this is a mental game now. Now they don't know if they can hang with Michigan. Tarpley. And he brings it up to the 29 yard line and talking to their head coach Al Levan who was a longtime assistant with the Dallas Cowboys and Tom Landry. You know he it was amazing and talking to him yesterday had unbelievable stories. Storyteller man. Yeah un, just great story and he had great running backs that played for him in the likes of Tony Dorsett and Herschel <laughs> Walker in Dallas. Yeah Roger Craig Priest Holmes Tom Rathman Bam Morris whole bunch of running backs. It I is. can coach them. <laughs> he was calling you coach. <laughs> and so all set here with Nick Elko out of the shotgun. Inside handoff to Jones and no place to go wrapped up and brought down by Brandon Graham and another tackle for a loss is 11th of the season as we bring in Brent. Guys you were talking about Al Levan and his travels in the NFL and across college football and you talked about the Niners well he was a member of George Seifert's staff in 1990 they won the Super Bowl of the Denver Broncos and there was a touchdown catch in that game by John Taylor and of course he's uh, well regarded for his exploits in Super Bowls. Taylor was a standout at Delaware State in his college days. Yeah, Taylor was a stud. I mean, he came out of Delaware State with huge numbers. I'm not surprised to see him do well so well in the NFL. Jones, another inside give, and he'll gobble it up in the philosophy as Mouton comes in and makes the tackle. You know, he kept on talking about, you know, possession game, possession game, and right. where we start, where we stop, and in the eyes and the mind and the philosophy of uh, Coach Levan, he said, you know, three and out's not bad, depending upon where you can pin back your opponent. I mean, field position is everything for a game like this. Nick Elko oh, pass ball. incomplete. Got to give Charles. your quarterback a chance, man. You got to help him out there. Young guy, this is his first start. Yeah. First start at the big house. Are you kidding me? You got to help him out, make an easy catch. But getting back to the recipe yeah. for success for Delaware State, I mean, the, the key for them is really to find a way to get a couple big plays in time of possession. You know, time of possession, it's kind of the recipe that Michigan State used almost 40 minutes of time of possession. The same exact thing Delaware State has to do, really an inferior team talent-wise. They have to find a way to get, keep the ball out of Michigan's hands. Martavius Odoms is back. Nick Lochner, who had a 41-yard boot from his own end zone, now sends it high in the air, and Odoms will take it at the 23-yard line. Odoms looking for room, and he's able to shed a tackler. And Delaware State, a good job that time of covering up as Odoms attempted to find a lane. Timeout, 7-0, Michigan Wolverines. Tate Forcier still on the field. So here. Opening quarter here at Michigan Stadium. Wolverines lead the Hornets 7 0. Go inside the conference four nights a week with four unique shows on the Big Ten Football Four Pack. Our ex experts bring you game plan, breakdowns, interviews, and analysis you won't find anywhere else. Catch the Football Four Pack every Tuesday through Friday at 10 o'clock Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network, the only cure for the gridiron deficiency and unfortunate situation for Richard Bernard the long snapper senior from Philadelphia Pennsylvania went to Lackawanna Junior College and on the coverage hustling down to get Odoms you see right there grabbing onto his knee and coach Al Levan out to check on his long snapper you know I've had I've had a knee injury I had a torn right ACL 
I'm not saying that's what that is. Obviously, we do not know, but I know it's it's a it's a lonely feeling when you're the guy on the field and you know something seriously wrong. Hopefully, for his sake, it's not. And you see him getting carted off now. And a round of applause from the Michigan fans. If you want to check in on the Purdue and Ohio State game, go to Big10Network.com/slash/GameFinder. That's Big10Network.com/slash/GameFinder. Denard Robinson will come out onto the field, and so Robinson in on the second series, direct snap, and he'll pick up. Six on the carry and possibly seven. And so he is known as his freshman as a runner. He's only thrown the ball 15 times. He has three picks. Yeah, not, not great says throwing throwing the ball. You know, if you throw 10 completions and three of them are picks, that's not the greatest thing. But this is what he brings to the table. He's a little bit of a change up. That's why it works for Michigan. He runs extremely well. One of the fastest guys on the club. Shaw busting through the middle. And up to the 44-yard line. So head coach Rich Rodriguez not waiting around. He said, you know what? I'm going to – Tate Forcier did a great job first series, second series. It looked like Tate was going to head back out there, but after the long pause, they went with Denard Robinson. Right, and as Shaw finds a big hole here on the draw, nice play for him. He's great in, the, in, in tight corners, really, Shaw. He does a good job being elusive in small holes. And speaking of being elusive, how about Denard Robinson getting through into Hornet territory before he's finally brought down at the 37-yard line? line and they bring two totally different things to the table Robinson and Forcier yeah they do they do with Robinson you get that spark and you know what's great about him too also as a quick running running back because he's really a running back with the ball is the offensive lineman don't have to hold those blocks so long he gets through so fast pick up a 20 he's a third leading rusher for the Michigan Wolverines he's going to pitch it to the near side Shaw with plenty of room Shaw turns up the shoulders and he's finally brought down at the 21 yard line in Michigan right now running left and right over Delaware State just a little shovel pass here from Denar, nice and easy. Gets Shaw in the open space, and that's where you want him, in the open field. You know, a guy like that with playmaker, game-breaking speed. Give him the ball early, let him get in open, open space. 16-yard pickup. It's first down once again. And a handoff to Vincent Smith, the true freshman from Florida. And Vincent Smith. It's about your side. For the ten. <laughs> I wish I was 168. Yeah, no 5 question. 6 168 is Vincent Smith, like you were back in seventh grade. <laughs> now you're going to have to go earlier than that. <laughs> 11 yard pickup. I really like Vincent Smith and his quickness despite that size. And Robinson goes straight up the gut. This is a extremely successful team once they get into the red zone, the Michigan Wolverines. And the Honda Generators red zone. This season, 45 possessions, 29 touchdowns, and six field goals. Robinson out of the shotgun. Second series for the Michigan Wolverines and a touchdown for Vincent Smith. His first touchdown as a member of the Michigan Wolverines comes against Delaware State on a six yard run. Looked easy, didn't it, man? It certainly did. And that explosiveness that he has and the ability to get outside. And there's Brandon Miner. Game time decision didn't go. The senior from Richmond, Virginia, had the start last week. And that one is through the uprights. It's 14-0. And as you would expect, Michigan looking extremely sharp against Delaware State offensively. Fourteen nothing Michigan with 8 12 remaining here in this first quarter. They've had the ball twice. They scored twice tonight in primetime. Two teams look to get the season back on track when the fighting Illini take on the Hoosiers 
And they battle under the lights in Bloomington tonight in high def presented by Hampton Hotel, 7 o'clock Eastern only on the Big Ten Network. It's Illinois and Indiana. That drive seven for 72 yards. Time, two minutes, 22 seconds. Vincent Smith on a six-yard rush in his first career. Touchdown. First one, five plays. 45 yards, 151, and the second one, seven plays for 72. Yesterday, in talking to Rich Rodriguez, you know, talking about executing, and he said, we got about 75% of what we want to do right. in right about now as we bring in Brent Stover. Brent? Guys, you know, Jordan Kovacs tried out for this Michigan team as a student body walk-on last fall, but got cut because he just uh, revealed too much in his physical on his surgically repaired knee. So Kovacs then goes out, gets surgery again on his own, comes back this past spring, tries out again, makes it. They thought he'd be a guy that might contribute on special teams. He's now the starting strong safety. In fact, he had 17 tackles against Michigan State, the most in a single game by any defender in the Big Ten this year. By the way, his defensive coordinator, Greg Robinson, didn't know who he was until Kovacs got a couple of reps late in camp. Robinson used to go on Kavanaugh, thought he was a totally different guy on the team. Over the last two weeks, he's had 28 tackles. Great story. All right, let's go check in with Dave Repson and our network students for a Prestone game break. Dave? Thank you, Matt. Purdue got an early field goal against Ohio State, but back come the Buckeyes. Terrell Pryor, a six-yard touchdown run, his fourth rushing touchdown of the year in Ohio State, now leading it 7-3. Matt? I appreciate it, Dave. And just to follow up on uh, Brent's story about Jordan Koufax, whose uh, father, Lou, played here. Coach Robinson telling us yesterday, he now just calls him Circle K. He's yeah. calling him Kavanaugh for a while. How great is that? <laughs> and you well, know he's just a walk-on. Yeah, so he's not going to say anything. Yes, no. coach. Yes, coach. Yes, coach. <laughs> right. Kavanaugh, get over here. Okay, I'm coming, coach. Wait a minute. But you said you, you, you saw that throughout your career, but you just, you, you know, it happens to guys, and guys don't ever want to say anything because <laughs> oh, no, they don't no, want to no. upset the coach, right? It happened to me and a guy by the name of Jeremy Tooman, who was a big-time tight end out of here in All-American. And we were with Gary Moeller as freshman. He used to get us mixed up all the time. We just nod, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, you're scared to say anything. <laughs> Especially, as you mentioned, as a walk-on. A great story. A big hit there in open field by Donovan Warren and a pickup of four for Delaware State as Michigan is on top, 14-0. And, and talking to new defensive coordinator Greg Robinson, he said that you know Donovan Warren's a guy that's just going to make a big play. One, you know, come away with one of them every game. Yeah, and he's had that ability so far. Three pick, ten games, three picks. Obviously, last week, first play of the game, took it, pick six. Guy's a good playmaker. There's no question about it. He's going to make it happen. Great ball skills, and that's the difference from good to great for a defensive back. Odom's back again, and the punter, Nick Lochner, with a new long snapper, uh -oh. and that one's blocked by Smith. An advanced touchdown, to Wolverines. Touchdown, Michigan. Wow. Brandon Graham. Brandon Smith came in with the block. Wow, you get a new long snapper in. You know, hasn't rehearsed as well as the starter. Struggled a little bit. Ball didn't get back there quite as fast as it normally would, but really just a lack of uh, protection here. An easy block. Took it off the foot. Quentin Fortis, the new long snapper. And it's now 21 to nothing on a block punt. And then senior from Detroit, Brandon Graham, hustles in. Big oh, Wolverine oh. touchdown. It was a. Yeah. Big Ten Network football presented by United States Marine Corps in Michigan up 21 to nothing. You're dominant as one would expect against Delaware State here opening up. Stay tuned for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report with scores and highlights from today's games. And of course, as you know, so many people 
And I think about the FCS, Michigan, and Appalachian State, but Appalachian State at even at a different level in the FCS than Delaware State at this stage in the MEAC. Coming off of a losing season last year and then without their starting quarterback, it is 21 to nothing. Brian Wright, a junior from Salem, Ohio, getting set. And he boots it all the way back to the end zone. And once again, Laurent Amore having trouble, and he's going to do the right thing. <laughs> He's learned. Flag, yeah, flag down on the play. It's a couple of times. Uh, Slip through the fingertips. And how about Brandon Graham, the United States Marine Corps salutes Graham. Today's leader of the game, his first career touchdown off of that block punt by Brandon Smith. And Brandon's going to be saying, hey, I set you up. Yep. <laughs> Right now he's living the dream. Just another thing for the stat sheet. You know, the guy's awesome. Uh, and, he, and he's had quite, I mean, three sacks, Blocking forced back. fumble. Number 84 on the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Blocking the back on a kneel down? And for Delaware State, they're backed up once again. Justin Wilson. This defense, of course, you know, the scheme changes a little bit with, or a lot really, with Greg Robinson. And and for them, you know, a confidence builder certainly against a team like this because this entire roster is extremely young. As I mentioned, 70 percent, nearly 70 percent are freshmen and sophomores, and they are just having their way up front. And a tackle and a, a Zay. Comes away with a tackle. Matt Devlin and Mark Campbell, former tight end here with the Michigan Wolverines, won it all back in 1997 from Michigan. Big Ten football, Delaware State against Michigan here at the Big House in Ann Arbor, Michigan. A beautiful day here for football and Wolverines fans expecting this kind of play out of Michigan on this day against this opponent. Plopped right in the middle of the Big Ten schedule, but with this young team, Maybe not a bad thing after two tough losses at Michigan State and then last week at Iowa. And an inside give and no place to go for the Hornets. Yeah, I see it as a huge advantage having a game like this in the thick of your season. Now, it may not make all the fans happy, but it's just a huge advantage for any football club. You're in the, you got a couple tough in-conference games, and you get a, a, you know, really an inferior team. A week you can heal up, almost like a bye week in the NFL. You can do all your mid-season reports, find out where people are, what, they, what you need to do to be a better football club. And that's what Rich Rodriguez told us you know, yesterday when we met with him is that this really gave us an opportunity to look at everything over the course of the previous six games and where guys lined up. Did we want to change anything? Yeah, as he said, the good, the bad, <laughs> the ugly. And pass is complete to Leron Moore. And Leron Moore on the reception there is actually a track star at Delaware State and trying to make that change into a football player gain of seven and it's going to bring up fourth down 10 3 9 in the 100 meters that's that's what you were running wasn't it? that was yes that was uh, back in the day back in the day <laughs> <laughs> no question oh yeah for 10 yards that was me Odoms at the 50 and a flag is down. Delay of game. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. And nothing going the way of Delaware State. They came in yesterday and they landed and came straight here to Michigan Stadium. As Nick Elko and Al Levan, the head coach, talk through things. They have never played in front of a a crowd this big, 100,000 plus, 106,000 plus. Lochner is sending Odoms back to the 48. Odoms looking around, trying to get outside and unable to do so as he is brought down by Kevin Green, the Purdue transfer. Big 10 standings, Ohio State, Iowa, 
remaining perfect 6-0. And, oh. and for Michigan, next week they have Penn State. And here's Penn State sitting at 5-1, and 1-1 one, one and one in conference play. that would be a huge game for Michigan especially. Obviously, Penn State still wants to vibe for the title. But, you know, a huge game for Michigan. Where are they going to come back? What are they going to come back with after two tough losses? Another big-time opponent. Big game. Denard Robinson remains on. And maybe that tells us a little bit about the injury to Tate Forcier as Shaw battles ahead close to a first down and he may have it. You know, the concussion a week ago and then obviously the injured shoulder as well. Right, right. You know, you, you have to be smart about it. As Shaw, you know, takes about five guys to get him down. Great run by him. They're very high on him. But you have to be smart about Tate. You know, let's make sure he's healthy. He's shown a huge upside. Is loose on the field, and did Delaware State come away with it? They did. Greg Lagan comes in and recovers it, and you see big Kevin Green, the transfer from Purdue. You know, a wise coach once told me, it is better to die an early death rather than fumble the football. <laughs> and what coach was that? That was Coach Carr. <laughs> and he said it all the time. And this has been an issue with Michigan. Over their last two games, they've turned it over seven times as Elko has his pass deflected. And it's something that, you know, their first two possessions, great. You know, seven plays, 72 yards, touchdown. First one, five plays, 45 yards, touchdown. Now all of a sudden you turn it over. Yes, you're up 21 nothing. But everything that we talked to Greg Robinson about, the defensive coordinator yesterday, as well as Rich Rodriguez about, was about executing and playing a near perfect game. Yeah, and these are young guys, and, and you know, you, you don't want to say it's expected, but you understand. You can understand that some young guys do some things, and they'll learn from it. So hopefully you take that sort of thing, and you find a way to develop it. You know, I'm sure the next time he gets a chance, he's going to hold on to the football. Moore, and he is out of bounds. There's Greg Robinson, former Syracuse head coach, longtime NFL assistant, and also assistant at UCLA. At North Carolina State said so really his relationship with Rich Rodriguez developed when both were in the Big East brings up third down now Elko flushed out of the pocket with room to run and he's cut down short of the first down and that's going to bring up fourth down once again after a gain of six and Michael Williams comes up to make the stop Luckner back to punt and Odoms is back to receive snap but able to get it away this time and the line drive back to the 37 yard line Odoms trying to get outside Odoms turns the corner and he is shoved out of bounds at the 38 yard line and great field position for Michigan yeah one of the things we talked about yesterday with coach Rod was he wants to improve his special teams they've been good okay not great I mean you take away uh, Storm's big return for a touchdown against Notre Dame the kickoff return and really they've been pretty average since then Punt return has struggled this is what Michigan needs they need Odoms one of their playmakers get the ball in the open field great for him good things to come for the punt return and that's something they can hang their hat on field position I know we talked about that earlier for Delaware State but it's the same for every team you can get some field position through your punt return a return of 26 yards Robinson will put it in the air wide open over the middle touchdown Michigan 38 yards and the touchdown to Grady pretty typical after a big play you know I know with Sean Payton the head coach of the New Orleans Saints that was one of the big things he did if there was a big play a big change a momentum swing a punt return a, a good return the foul lane play deep the next ball you're going deep
Michigan up. Now 28 to nothing. Right down the heart of the defense. Kelvin Grady, touchdown Michigan. Now it's time for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Wild Fan Cam. Feeling good here at the big house. 28-0. One play, seven seconds. Denard Robinson to Kelvin Grady for his first career touchdown. Jack Link's Beef Jerky, feed your wild side. Three Michigan players with their first career touchdowns here on this early afternoon with Vincent Smith, Brandon Graham, and Kelvin Grady. And sending it back now and scooping it up is Moore. Moore looking for a place to go. And he's going to be cut down at the 24 yard line. And let's see if Delaware State can get something going offensively. They have not been able to get into Michigan territory as of yet. For the Michigan Wolverines, you have this game right in the midst of this Big Ten schedule. And mentioned earlier, Penn State next week. And their last two games in conference, tough overtime loss at Michigan State and then last week at Iowa. And two tough losses. They, yeah, and they were feeling the magic going into that Michigan State game. I think you only can have so many game winning yeah. drives before you kind of run out of that luck. Jones trying to get outside and clock up, no place to go. And bouncing all over the offense at Delaware State. And Michael Williams are right there on the scene, and J.B. Fitzgerald. Brent Stover. Matt, a lot of solid characters on this Delaware State team. One of them is senior starting center Nick Richmond, been nominated for the AFCA Good Works team. He started every game in his career in which he's been healthy, a two-year captain, heavily involved in fellowship of Christian athletes. Also serves as a role model for kids at a local detention center in Dover and makes regular visits to local elementary schools. That's great to hear Nick Richmond uh, from Pennsylvania, the senior. Center for Al Levan is Delaware State team right now 28 nothing here in this first quarter guy could be running for office <laughs> one day there's a face mask and that's going to help out the Hornets they have been to the 32 yard line their own 32 yard line that's their best field position and now they're up to the 41 yard line that's so their first first down man and so Nick Elko, backup quarterback, starting the redshirt freshman out of the shotgun. And flagged down as that pass is batted by Stevie Brown. <laughs> they love this guy. They love Stevie Brown. Talking with Greg Robinson yesterday. Talked about Stevie Brown a whole lot. I think he opened with Stevie. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield on the offense. Five-yard penalty. That penalty is declined. Second down. Yeah, the, and the other thing about Stevie Brown, I, I mean, I've never heard a coach use this description of a player before. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. I've never heard that of a description, but really for what he saw watching film in 2008 for the defense that he was getting here in 2009, he was excited about Stevie Brown because he's a hybrid player. Yep. He's a guy that can rush, he can cover, he can do everything. <laughs> He said he was, quote, a godsend. He said he was always kind of interested in that Sam linebacker nickel guy that could kind of do both instead of getting caught up with changing a guy coming in. And he gave us a few examples of, you know, when and how that would happen against him. Yeah, there's no question. There, there's no subbing. You don't have yeah. to bring a guy in for your nickel package. The other thing is, the strength of this 3-4 defense is they never know. The offense never knows where the fourth <laughs> rusher is coming from. That's, you know, that's that's definitely something they can work with. They can bring it from different sides. Right. They never know. And Stevie Brown, with his capabilities, can cover whatever side he has to. And the senior from Columbus, Indiana, with four interceptions. And a tackle for a loss make it 41 tackles on the year Stevie Brown we've seen this a lot over the years Brandon Graham coming around 
coming around the left tackle for a sack. I mean, he's tough. He's tough for anybody. So I'm sure this guy has not seen that kind of talent in the MIAC. So, I mean, you can't, you know, he's doing the best he can, but for someone like Brandon Graham, they're going to struggle. And that speed right there, Brandon Graham, 15th in the nation with tackles for loss. And he's just piling them up here on this day. It's 28 nothing Wolverines and Lochner on once again. And Odom telling everybody to stay away from it. And now Michigan is going to be pinned back at the 13 yard line. And for the Wolverines. And next week, Penn State. And then at Illinois, Purdue, Wisconsin. And the seventh ranked Buckeyes. 49 yard punt. Love it. Great game, Michigan, Ohio State. But does it get any better than that? Uh, for some people, it does. I'm in the state I mean, of Michigan. It, it, well, f for a player, former player like yourself at Michigan, <laughs> you've changed, buddy. You, no, you but have wait changed and not what, for what, the better. What, 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 what happens to the Michigan to Michigan State game? That's in state. That's different. That's different. Okay. There's different levels, right? I mean, Michigan, Notre Dame. That's different. That's different. They're all good. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Big time run for the freshman, Vincent Smith, off the right side. You know, guys always remember this, right, from Michigan. How many times you beat Michigan State? How many times did you beat Michigan State? Uh, four. Four. You were. You well, four to five years, right. Denard Robinson. I needed that fifth year. <laughs> I, I was going to actually leave that alone. Vincent Smith in the backfield. Stokes to the near side. Good run. And for Vincent Smith, another carry and then another first down and a pickup of 10 yards for Michigan. And so one flaw for the Wolverines here in this first quarter, the, the fumble. But then they came right back in Denardo Robinson with a touchdown pass to Kelvin Grady. Michigan on top, 28-0 at the end of the opening quarter here in Ann Arbor. It's a Big Ten Saturday. Nothing, Michigan as we begin the start of the second quarter. Denard Robinson on a handoff and straight ahead is Vincent Smith and he's going to have a big day of the true freshman from Pahokee, Florida and a pickup of eight yards. This is a Michigan team, Mark, that's perfect 4-0 here at home and I mentioned this earlier in the open about Tate Forcier but it's this entire roster and they average nearly 38 points a game and here they sit with 28 and the give once again at 35. Smith bouncing out caught from behind down at the 15. It's a good run and talking with coach Rod yesterday you know he talked about his playmakers some guys some young guys he's really excited about he talked about Shaw and Smith and obviously with a run like this he's got great vision great balance quick cut and he's gone back door no contain on the back side you want to get a guy in the open field like that. I mean, every coach would love that. But talking with Coach Rod, he was really excited about these two young guys. He obviously knew they were going to play a lot more today. They look really sharp right now. And the offensive line, obviously, we haven't talked about them. They're doing a wonderful job, a great job. And what, what happens is when you get these quick little backs, it's easier for the offensive line. They don't have to hold the box as long. And flags everywhere. Jerome Strums came in. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Catch him from behind. And in the first quarter, 199 yards of total offense for the Wolverines wow. and just 20 for Delaware State. And Vincent Smith energy, this is all his numbers. 87 yards. He came in four games of action, nine carries, 35 yards. Into the near side. Wolverines, another big gain and another first down as Stoneham, Daryl Stoneham will put the Wolverines inside the five yard line and here they are in the red zone once again brought to you by Honda Generators. 
the Honda Generators Red Zone. Today, they've been inside the 22 times. They've come away with two touchdowns. Vincent Smith. And he's clogged up. And he gets right about to the line of scrimmage. And Andre Carroll comes in on the stop. Yeah, that looked like a little bit of a broken play to me. It just didn't look quite smooth as it should. You know, a couple of young guys, two true freshmen out there. So, you know, that's kind of to be, to be expected. You know, this is a perfect game for them to work those kind of things out. Michael Shaw now in that eye formation. Shaw with one touchdown on the season. Robinson sprinting out to the end zone. Dropped. Brown Trees, he's the receiver that had that big touchdown to tie the game at Michigan State in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it was interesting in talking to Coach Rodriguez yesterday about where he is with the offense right now and this spread attack, and that ball was right where you wanted it. And it's dropped, but he said about 75%, probably a year or two away, he said, you know, from getting everything in and where they want to be from an offensive structure standpoint. Did you find that interesting or no? No, I did, as Denard scores here on a quick outside run. That's what you get with him. But, you know, the thing about this offense is it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time to get the right players in. But he's saying he's got 75% of the offense in. Yeah. He's going to put that much in because he knows his guys can handle that much. They're going to do that fast, play fast. And that's what he said, you know, we want to keep playing faster, faster, and faster. And Denard Robinson getting the touchdown. It's 34-0. Try to make it 35-0 Michigan. It's going to be a huge day here. I think as everybody expected. And Michigan is coming through. Just one blunder and fumble. But since that, they've been perfect every time they've touched the ball. Denard Robinson hustling in for the TD. Michigan 35 nothing ran into a Michigan family last night. They were bringing their daughter to their first ever Michigan football game and the dad said hey I wanted to make sure it was a W. <laughs> <laughs> that way you get total buy in as you know Mark right. Absolutely. With the young ones bring them to a win. They have a great day. Keep them coming back. And they uh, keep coming back. All right boots it and it's handled at the. 13 yard line Tarpley turns it up and he gets to the 25 yard line and another flag is down 35 nothing now illegal block in the back number 10 on the receiving team half the distance to the goal first down Next Saturday on the Big Ten Network, the Hoosiers look to spoil homecoming in Evanston when they take on Northwestern. Coverage starts with the Auto Owners Insurance pregame show at 1030 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. Check local listings for the game in your area. So three rushing touchdowns today. The touchdown by Graham, Brandon Graham, off of the block punt by Brandon Smith. And then one passing touchdown on a great connection from Robinson to Grady. Elko hands it off and just no place to go. And let's send it to Dave Rebson in our network studios for a Prestone game break. Dave, what do you have? Well, Matt, one update you on the game between Iowa and Wisconsin. Badgers up 3 0. John Clay a little banged up, so the true freshman Monty Ball comes in. 10 yard touchdown run. First of his career. Iowa just kicked a field goal, so it's 10 3, Badgers. Iowa coming off of that big win against Michigan last week 30 28 how would they react and respond 6 and 0 on the season and Matthews or rather Michael Williams trying to tie up the Hornet and down is Tyree McQueen and a flag on the play personal foul face mask number 40 on the defense 15 yard penalty automatic first down and it's against Michael Williams Michigan's defense they did a really good job of swarming to the ball you know talking with Greg Robinson yesterday talked about getting four or five guys to the ball that's when you get your turnovers you get multiple hits someone gets their hand on the ball rip out 
Obviously, you don't want to grab the face mask. Yeah, this is a Hornets team. They have not been shut out in 57 straight games. Delaware State, last time they were shut out was back in 2004. But certainly the defense of Michigan has been outstanding. And Nick Elko, a redshirt freshman, has just had troubles. You know, you look at the pressure supplied up front by Van Bergen, Martin, and Graham. And they've been in the backfield all day of Delaware State as a transfer from Cincinnati Tyree McQueen hobbles off gets his ankle caught underneath that's tough it happens a lot when you get a lot of people piling around the football guys are going to fall down the way they wrap up they roll it happens a lot and so Nick Elko trying to get into Michigan territory for the first time it's going to be first and ten a penalty against Michigan helping out here first and ten at the 32. Elko changing things up. Jones in the backfield with him and now a timeout. You know earlier Matt you talked about uh, of the way that they're getting pressure up front. And Michigan's only had eight sacks for them to come in and do well and get this kind of pressure. That means their DBs are by themselves. 100. Dominant performance by Michigan, 35 nothing over Delaware State. And coming out of the Delaware State timeout, first and 10 from their own 32, Nick Elko, Jones in the backfield. Elko looking to the near side and a quick slant. And first down, but a flag on the play as Calvin Tolliver is on the reception, but a flag is down. That may come back. Shot block. 68 on the offense. 15 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Center Nick Richmond, and so that's going to now bring it back once again. And for Delaware State, they just can't get out of their own way. Right there it is. Hmm. Those yeah, are dangerous. You, you watch this, and it, it's tough for a team that's a little bit, they have inferior talent to another. Of course, there are going to be yep. more penalties. They have to do some things that they wouldn't normally have to do. But, I mean, you're watching this game. It, it's got to drive Coach LeVan just absolutely nuts. I mean, they have, there's more flags on the field than at the Olympic Games right now. <laughs> You've been saving that lineup, haven't you? Buddy, it's a, a couple weeks, a couple weeks. <laughs> you worked on that, didn't you? It took a lot of time. <laughs> Elko and not getting helped out by the receivers as coming out of the backfield and just Sean Jones and he's unable to hold on to it. Largest crowd that Delaware State ever played in front of was 29,713 against Florida A&M and that was actually real close to here <laughs> at Ford Field in Detroit. They met in Detroit, Michigan. So there it is. I mean, you, you could pile up there the biggest crowds that they've ever played in front of 29,000, 26, 25, 23, 22, and more are right here at the big house on this Saturday early afternoon. Elko changing things up. And it's going to be a delay a game. He ran into that trouble. And Five yard that. penalty, still second down. He's got to be. A little bit more decisive when you come out, especially with the way the things really aren't working for you. So you just got to come out and say, hey, this is where we're yeah. going. Yeah, and especially with him being a freshman, I would come out and say, listen, if we're going to run these 10 plays. That's it. Let's do these 10 plays. Let's do them well. Take out any, you know, decisiveness or indecisiveness, if you will. And Coach LeVan did tell us that he's a knowledgeable player. Maybe he gets out there and he's just thinking too much and just said that. Letting it go as Moore brings that one in on the far side. And Michigan is a dominant performance. Troy Wolfup and Greg Robinson telling us about Troy just saying, you know, that corner, that's his world. You know, yeah. they moved him safety back and forth, just a lot more comfortable in that corner spot. Yeah, and I think they needed him there. You know, they were kind of had some uh, lack of play at the corner position. He was playing fine at safety, but he's a better corner than he is a safety. That's going to bring up now third down in a bundle. Third and 25 now for Delaware State. Elko straight up the middle. 
And he's going to be cut down at the 24 yard line and possibly got up to the 25. And Lochner is going to have to come out once again to punt. And Stevie Brown is right there. 41 tackles coming in on the season. And he's added to that total here on this day. Odoms is back at his own 35. And when your head coach Al Levan says that one of our biggest pluses is our punter, you know and then he's just going to get a bundle of work and has gotten a bundle of work. And that one's going to be taken and then lost. And Odom smartly just falls on at the 40 yard line and the Wolverines will come out. The principal edge to this game. How about the total offense today? 267 yards on the season. You see what they average. But this is a Michigan team that here they are with 928 remaining in this second quarter. Tate Forcier did come out run the first series. It was a quick series resulting in a touchdown. Five plays, 45 yards, took 151. And since that time, Denard Robinson, but you and I were talking before we went on the air and you said, you know, I could really see where this is the day for Denard Robinson just based on everything with Tate for CA. Yeah, of course. Let's get Tate ready for the following week against Penn State, a huge game. He's got an AC joint. He had the concussion. Wow. Why play him in a game that you're going to have easily in hand? And plus, Denard hasn't got a whole lot of reps, a whole lot of throws, too. So let's get him here, give him the bulk of the reps, and see how he develops. Kevin O'Grady on the carry. His younger brother, Kelvin, has a touchdown, former basketball player here in Michigan. His first career touchdown as a Michigan Wolverine, Kelvin. And a pickup of four for Kevin O'Grady, the red shirt, fifth year senior, in fact. Second down now and five. Denard Robinson. Out of the shotgun. Grady in the backfield. And Robinson's going to keep it, go straight ahead. And he's got a first down and more as he carries a pile with him into Hornet territory and now finally pushed back a half a yard or so. It brought down at the 46 yard line of Delaware State. Moving forward, I mean, this is where, you know, Coach Rodriguez just uh, no controversy, no issue. I rotate guys in and out and. At the time, nobody knew of the concussion to Tate Forcier last week against Iowa. And they went out there, and of course, Robinson throws that interception. But now, all of a sudden, moving uh, forward, do you look at it from a, oh, this is going to create even more of a stir here? Well, I don't know if it, if it creates a stir because they use them a little bit dif differently. And a week ago, I mean, he was three for four, Robinson was in the, in the final two drives. Right. He threw the pick, but he was trying to make something happen at that point. He did give them a spark. Now, Tate was struggling up to that point, so why not? Why not go to your second quarterback? They're both young guys. You don't know how they're gonna how they're going to do in that kind of situation, the pressure situation in a hostile environment. I felt like it was the right decision to do, to do even if they weren't trying to rotate quarterbacks. And you played here in a Michigan when there was a time when there's a couple of different guys coming in and out at that quarterback position. It's not like that hasn't happened here before. It's Grady carries a football. Yeah, I mean, I've been on some clubs where we've rotated quarterbacks. One of them turned out all right. Just a guy by the name of uh, Tim Brady. Yeah, oh, Tim, Tom Brady. Uh, Tom, yeah. yeah, his career kind of turned out all right. And, you know, he was spending some time with Drew Henson. They were splitting reps. Before him, Brian Greasy. I mean, there's been lots and lots of quarterbacks here who have split time, and they'll find a way to get on the field if they're good enough. And so Robinson now under center. Robinson play action rolls out under pressure down the middle of the field. Touchdown. Excellent job getting behind the defense. And the touchdown for Martell Webb. And a good read that time by Robinson. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great read. I mean, obviously, it's just a little play action here. I see the tight end go out the flat. My first reaction is get rid of the ball quick. Because especially as a young quarterback, you're trying to get – you have to learn. You don't have much time. You don't have as much as you want. And also, get the ball in the receiver's hands. Let him run with it. But when I saw where the ball was going, obviously, he knew the backside tight end was wide open. Great decision. And the coaching continues for Rich Rodriguez. 28-yard connection. And Michigan continues to pile it up 42 nothing. Under pressure, finds Webb. Webb into the end zone. Already 42-0 Michigan. Stay tuned for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report with scores and highlights from 
all of today's games in the Big Ten and a lot to talk about with highlights and scores from this one 42 nothing and for Michigan Denard Robinson a couple of touchdown to passes to Grady and then Webb and they added three touchdowns on the ground they lead the Big Ten in that category and they're tied for fifth coming into this game they have 18 now rushing touchdowns and then that last pass from Robinson to Webb and Michigan is rolling folks Tarpley getting outside Tarpley up to the 44 yard line and so a chance now for Delaware State and let's see if their offense can click just a little bit and they haven't been able to thus far. I mean at this point if you're a Delaware State fan you're saying let's put something on the board yep. let's do something here and for the guys the guys playing it's important that they do something well so when they go to watch the film they can kind of hang their hand on something getting ready for the next week. Denard Robinson 28 yard hookup with Webb five plays 60 yards 209 Webb his first career touchdowns <laughs> that's happened a lot here in the first half the junior from Pontiac Michigan Robinson three of four 85 yards and a couple of touchdowns as we mentioned in in four Michigan players with their first career touchdowns as we just mentioned and it's one thing to feel as though you're going to dominate a team it's another thing to come out and actually execute and do it they do have that a one to fumble and a nice hook up there unable to get the first down it's going to bring up now second and short as Charles comes down with it and it's going to be third and short into Michigan territory for the first time so third and short now third and one for Delaware State. Jackson in motion. Elko under pressure has Brandon Graham staring him down and running him down and another tackle for a loss. Coming hard off the edge and Greg Robinson's got to like that. Yeah he loves Brandon Graham and obviously you know any defensive coordinator or coach would. He brings a lot to the table. He's also one of the vocal leaders. He helps a lot with the young guys and there's a lot of young guys on the defense. He helps a lot with them and getting them ready to play. A loss of five that's going to bring up now fourth down and Nick Lochner on once again. Getting a workout. Lochner and it's out of bounds inside the 20 yard line and they're going to mark it at the 17 as we bring in a Brent Stover. Brent? It's coming back on the field. David Mooseman on that old line, the ultimate team guy in the last two losses. He was the first guy to literally pick up Denard Robinson, help him off the field after that interception in last week's game. Before he was the guy after the Michigan State loss in the locker room, slapping guys with the shoulder pads, telling them to keep their heads up. And he's playing center right now. He's a career guard, but an injury at center to David Moult, so he's filling in there. By the way, he's also a nationally ranked chess player, former national champion. Good stuff, David Amusman. You'd expect that out of a fifth year senior. And Nick Sheridan is on a quarterback and a big time run for Kevin Grady as he busts through a pile of Hornets and then comes out on the near side. And a big run for Grady up past the 40 yard line and a pickup of 25 yards as you see the third quarterback used here on this day and Nick Sheridan. Yeah, Nick was well, he was the opening day starter a year ago. Obviously they got two two young guys now that fit this offense a little bit better than him but the ultimate team guy very good at helping the young guys. He's obviously a little more developed with them physically and mentally at this point in this offense and he puts all of his pride aside and he helps these young guys out. And the second appearance of the season for Nick Sheridan. You know getting back to the offensive lineman mentioned this earlier Rich Rodriguez telling him what telling us what a calming influence they are with those two young freshman quarterbacks and they don't have as Brent mentioned David Amalco though they think he could be back the center 
next week against Penn State and Grady off the right side with a first down just said the leadership that that you know the the guys up front have has certainly been significant for this this young team yeah absolutely and, and in any huddle any huddle at all if your quarterback's a young guy someone else has to be the vocal leader because he's not going to feel like he has that privilege that right to be able to speak to the guys the way sometimes they need to be spoke to so david mock is that vocal leader for this offense but in the meantime they got plenty of guys that can do that and they you know the young guys haven't been rattled they've been pretty much kept in check with the help of those linemen like you talked about first down Jerron Stokes on the reception and it is 42 nothing and Nick Sheridan comes up and Sheridan on second and short out of the shotgun Sheridan looks over and now we'll swing it to the far side and a great catch by Grady. Grady has a first down and down to the 25 yard line. From a level of play standpoint, and we talked about the last two weeks at Michigan State and at Iowa, and, and you know, here's Michigan rolling and against an inferior opponent in Delaware State. And then you know you got Penn State though next week. You know, from a level of play and intensity standpoint, and what are your thoughts as you now look at Michigan, what they're able to do out here, because they're able to execute. Right, they can pretty much do whatever right. they want at will at this point. But the great news about it is, aside from you know, a couple of the usual starters, especially on the offensive line, those all young guys out there right now. So it gives them a great time, you know, to show their skills in a perfect scenario where really if they do mess up, it's not going to hurt anything. So going forward, you get this kind of experience in a game like this. You could keep applying them to bigger games, bigger situations. Vincent Smith on the carry having his best day ever in his brief career here in Michigan. Nick Sheridan on the move, fires it. A first down and down at the six yard line. Savoy on the reception. Letariel Savoy. And in the red zone once again, brought to you by Honda Generators. Today, they've been in there three times, three touchdowns for the Michigan Wolverines. And a marching down once again after a 19 yard gain. And a good job by Nick Sheridan as he got out into space and had a Hornet defense on him and he was able to connect with Savoy and Grady just keeps going plowing forward and into the end zone and the Wolverines are there once again their fourth rushing touchdown of the day that's 19 on the year which leads the Big Ten and Grady deserved that touchdown makes two guys miss Takes about two guys on at the goal line for the touchdown. He deserved that touchdown. Now they had three rushing touchdowns against Iowa a week ago who had not given up a rushing touchdown in 33 quarters. This Michigan team could rush the football against anybody. And especially against a Delaware State team that allows better than 200 a game. Well, they've surpassed that already here. Grady grinding it out. As a Right, rolls it on the ground and it's scooped up by Moore. Moore at the 30, to the 35, 40, 50, Moore! The track star for Delaware State, deep into Michigan territory. So Delaware State with the spark, down 49 nothing, And for them, they're actually gonna start in Michigan territory for the first time. That's the old kickoff free ball disease. What happens is when it's those kind of low liner kicks that kind of, you know, roll across the ground, you kind of don't know where they're going. Everyone starts running for the football and all the kickoff team, they get out of their lanes. You have to be disciplined on that kickoff team and that's why you could get to the outside edge. Elko looking around with plenty of time and the pass is caught inside the five. Dixon on the reception. On the generators red zone. This season, five touchdowns. They've been inside the red zone just nine times. And now the crowd getting into it. They want to shut out here with 123 remaining in the second quarter. 49-0. Elko, plenty of time. 
Flushed out now. On the run. Throws it to the back of the end zone. Incomplete. Yeah, if there's, you know, sometimes things, little things, right? Get, get, you know, the thought about a shutout from a player perspective or a coaching staff perspective is something that you, know, you start thinking about. Yeah, there's something about hanging up, you know, a goose egg up there, especially defensively. You know, you want to hold teams. That's one of the landmarks, you know, one of the things that you shoot for in every game. 55 points is a record for the first half for Michigan scoring. They have 49 against Delaware State. Elko under pressure. Short arms it to Jones. Yeah, speaking with Coach Levan yesterday, and one of the things he talked about was the red zone had been their Achilles heel all year for the offense. You know, they really struggled in the red zone. The year before, the year prior, 2008, they were great in the red zone. They were like 35 or 43 for 81 percent. Great numbers in the red zone. Struggling this year, and that's tough. When your defense giving up rushing yards and you can't score in the red zone, that's a recipe not to win football game. It's going to bring down third down and goal here they come Elko to Jones knocked back and Stevie Brown on the scene and he wrestles them out of bounds they were flying in Tariq Jones coming in from the corner the true freshman from Detroit and fourth down, and they're going to try to get on the board for three. And this is dicey. Kicking game. One of six. This is dicey. Riley Flickinger, a senior from Gresham, Oregon, and a timeout. And Coach Levan said, you know, if it's fourth down and we have a chance to go for it, we may, but this is a situation where he just wants to get on the board. Let's take a look at today's auto owners insurance game leaders, and there are a bundle of them, Robinson and Smith and Grady. And Kelvin's brother, Kevin Grady, you could add to the list as well. And, and this is a situation too with the new long snapper in. How does that affect things? Nick Luckner, the punter, is the holder. Flickinger is on. As you mentioned, he's made just one field goal. It is good. And Delaware State is on the board. 49 to 3. With 57 seconds remaining here in the first half in the thought of a shutout is gone and Delaware State as we mentioned it's been 57 straight games that they haven't been shut out that streak will continue for them on to 58 last week they lost to Bethune Cookman 9 7 and more that big run on that squib kick set everything up yeah, and that's what Coach Rod talked about it yesterday. Talking about special teams, and one of the things he wanted, he was worried or concerned about was his kickoff team. In every game, no game's going to be a perfect football game. Every coach realizes that they will never admit it. It's just something that they all have. It's in their DNA. So I guarantee tomorrow, the day after, whenever they decide they're going to watch film, he's going to harp about kickoff, and rightfully so. But really, this game has been dominated by Michigan. I'm happy for the, all the Delaware State fans because now they don't have that goose egg up there. They got something they can hang their hat on, something they can be uh, proud about. You know, at least they have three points. They didn't get shut out in the big house. Well, you know, Coach Rodriguez told us yesterday when we talked to him, he said, we didn't cover well at Iowa a week ago. And then it kind of rears its head here. And while you're still up 46, <laughs> you know, you are looking for, you know, certain milestones as you look to progress this young team. And special teams, is, as you mentioned, has you know, been a little bit of an issue. He said, you know, we just, you know, haven't been that consistent. We need to be more consistent on punt returns and, you know, kickoffs. Number 25 on the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. And that's going to back him up. Kenny Demons. And you see the reaction of Rich Rodriguez. 26-yard field goal, five plays, 14 yards 
forty five seconds in Delaware State on the board under a minute remaining here and Michigan's going to get it backed up here as they lead forty nine to three fifty five is the record for points for Michigan team in the first half and the record book on a day like today is going to change as Nick Sheridan sprints out first and ten and they're going to start from their own seven. Handoff. Looking around. And Shaw is stacked up and brought down. Joe Mendez out of Montclair, New Jersey there. And the clock's running. And it's going to be second down and long here as Nick Sheridan looks over. Forty nine to three dominant performance for Michigan. Just a couple of things a fumble and then kickoff coverage. Other than that they have been nearly perfect Shaw getting to the outside Shaw out of bounds just shy of the 30 with eight seconds remaining here in this second quarter. Yeah a great run by Shaw. I mean this is really at this point they're not going to pass the ball. They know they're going to run the ball. So to run the ball effectively when the defense know that you're going to knows that you're going to run it. I mean it says a lot to the Michigan's offense and how they're playing right now with Shaw. This guy you give him a little gap and he's going to take it a long way. You know talking with Chris Singletary one of the the recruiting coordinator for the University of Michigan the guy I played with when I played here you know, he was one of the guys I asked him about was Shaw and he, he, he was really excited to see what he was going to do today and we talked about the records well you can add to it as Shaw is out of bounds and the clock continues to run through in the first half is going to end 49 to 3 total offensive record of the first half was held and by the Wolverines against the Badgers back in 1988, 412. Will they shatter that with their first half performance here as we send it down to Brent Stover. Brent? Coach, you pleased with what you've seen in the first half? Yeah, there's a few things. Obviously, our kickoff coverage has got to get a lot of work to get done, and uh, we've executed pretty well at times offensively, got a few big plays, and on the second half, we got to get a lot of young guys some experience. How about the young running backs? They've run pretty hard. You know, again, they've had some nice holes. The guys up front have done a good job. The quarterbacks have executed, but there's a lot of things I can see already we've got to clean up. Coach, thanks. Okay, thank you. As you would expect, right? Coach looking at us. Got some things to talk to his guys about. Denard Robinson with a big day in the air and on the ground. Wolverines have been dominant throughout. Halftime here. Dave Repson on the other side. Forty nine to three Michigan over Delaware State since 1927 the Wolverines have been playing football here at a Michigan Stadium affectionately known as the big house. All season long champion apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the Big Ten. Today we spotlight the big house. Since 1927 the Wolverines have called Michigan Stadium home. During that time more than 35 million people have watched the Wolverines at the big house and more than 100,000 have been in attendance for every Michigan home game since 1975. In 2003, an NCAA record 112,118 people saw the Wolverines beat arch rival Ohio State. Currently under renovation, the big house will expand to a seating capacity of more than 108,000 in 2010. And the man that named it the big house, Keith Jackson, turns 81 years of age tomorrow. Happy birthday to one of the greats, Keith Jackson. All right, when you go back to that first half, Mark, and you look at what the Michigan Wolverines were able to do, just a couple of things stand out with regard to things that didn't go well with the fumble and that kickoff coverage. But other than that, man, they were sensational. Well, it was pick your poison in the first half of the Michigan Wolverines, and really from all of their young guys, the running backs is Especially the two young guys, Michael Shaw and Vincent Smith, really stood out. 160 yards rushing between the two of them and two touchdowns. Brandon Graham picking up the punch from the block, one for a touchdown. Bernard Robinson.
been effective through the air, three for four with two touchdowns. All great signs for these guys for years to come. And something near and dear to your heart, a tight end actually getting a touchdown. <laughs> no question. Give him the ball. Give him the ball. Give him more, right? Let's take a look at today's first half stats brought to you by Major League Baseball, MLB, and, and a record in the first half for total offense, 442 yards. I'm a huge number for, for a game, let's alone the first half. Delaware State's got to do a little bit better job, I think, in the second half to keep that number yeah, down. Well, extremely difficult to do against this Michigan Wolverines team. Big Ten Network football is brought to you in part by Verizon Football Zone on VCast, only from America's most reliable wireless network, Verizon Wireless. Auto Owners Insurance. Get to know the independent agents representing Auto Owners Insurance, keeping everything you value safe, sound, and secure. By Lipitor. And by Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Getting sent for the third quarter here at a Michigan Stadium. 49 to 3. Wolverines over the Delaware State Hornets. The start of the second half is brought to you by SureStart Herbicide from Dow Agro Sciences. It's designed to maximize yield in Roundup Ready corn. Delaware State Hornets band at halftime put on a sensational show. Yeah, fans appreciative here at the big house. And for the Wolverines, they'll open up with the ball here to start the second half. And from the Wolverine standpoint, Smith, Graham, Grady, and Webb all and with their first career touchdowns. Stoneham back along with Vincent Smith back to receive for Michigan. Stoneham takes it. Stoneham plenty of room up to the 25, 26, 30. Spins away from a tackler and flag is down. And brought down at the 34-yard line. Daryl Stoneham, his average of 27.1 on the return. Uh, one of the best. Holding number 80 on the receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down. Martell Webb, the tight end. With the whole Big Ten college football brought to you in high definition to buy Phillips HD available at Target, Walmart, and Sam's Club. <laughs> Penalties like that not a factor against Delaware State, but they are when you are back in conference in the Big Ten. And so once again, something that Rich Rodriguez spoke to us about yesterday, his special teams, you know, some issues with it, and a penalty to open up things here. And from the 24-yard line and coming out to start the second half, is Nick Sheridan and on the inside give Vincent Smith and Smith is going to gobble up five possibly six yeah in the first half we talked about Nick Sheridan and what he can bring to the table as far as helping the other quarterbacks he comes from a football family his father Bill Sheridan is a defense coordinator of the Giants obviously he's going to go to his dad with any defense he sees and say dad what are they trying to do to me here hits two the freshman, Vincent Smith, who gets outside and picks up a first down. And, you know, you start to think it a little bit about possibly a shutout, but then you, the field goal for Delaware State stopped that. But here are some things to think about when you look at the largest margin of victory ever for Michigan. It happened back in 1904 against West Virginia, 130 to nothing as Sheridan swings it to the near side. And another first down for the Michigan Wolverines as Robinson comes down with it. The redshirt freshman from Klein, Texas. 
And those were all shutouts, by the way. 100-point games. West Virginia, 130. Buffalo back in 1901. I mean, how is that possible? I mean, 130 points, are you serious? Uh, yeah, it's in the record book. Across the middle of the field, another first down for Michigan. And Brandon Moore, the redshirt freshman from Trotwood, Ohio, tight end comes down with it in the middle of the field. Yeah, I, you know, he's rocking the 88, look, making it look nice. I thought they retired that thing after I left. <laughs> I mean, I had 15 starts. You got to retire that thing. Uh, we were having a numbers conversation, but I, you're like, hey, you know, I wasn't that big of a numbers guy. And then, you know, you trade, change from 82 to 88. That should say Campbell on the back there. Well, it, it, was, it was slimming. <laughs> it was slimming. Kevin Grady straight ahead. And a gain is seven. It's amazing that they actually decided to hand that number out again after you left in 98. Well, I, I'm, I, honestly, I'm shocked. And uh, now that I see that it is uh, back in uh, being used, a little bit offended. Yeah, no, Brandon. Brandon Moore wears it well. He does. And, and Craig Rowe, two, two young guys with huge upsides. Uh, I mean, obviously, I, I, I couldn't care less about the numbers. But, you know, it's actually great. I love coming back. And, and I always would look, and, as I'm sure any past player, who's wearing their number now? And he takes a pride in that. Vincent Smith on the carry here at the big house. Matt Devlin and Mark Campbell actually in his first time back here witnessing a game, announcing it. Delaware State against the Wolverines at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's a little bit different perspective up here than, than down on the sideline. Well, there's no question about that. You know, it's a little surreal, to be honest with you, to be up here calling this game when I'm used to being on that field. And, you know, frankly, you know, with my 10 years in the NFL and, and the bye week, I'm pretty sure my wife is going to say, let's go to Florida instead of let's go back to Ann Arbor in the middle of winter. So uh, it's great to be back. I couldn't be more excited to call on this game. And, you know, I'm looking forward to coming back next time as well. And, of course, move back into the area. And Vincent Smith is over the 100-yard mark and having his best game. And he came in nine carries, 35 yards, no touchdowns. Picked up his not only first career touchdown, but also first career 100-yard game and many more yards as he piles it on down to the six-yard line in today's Liberty Mutual Alumni Spotlight. Who could it be? The suspense is killing me. Oh, there he is right there with the jug. I mean, no the, less. Well, the jug and John Jansen's the other guy holding that. I mean, that's an awkward hold right there with that jug. <laughs> I'm going across the grain there, holding the helmet in the other hand, and that dude was nasty. You liked it. You're Caesar a cut. I rocked the Caesar cut hard. Yeah. <laughs> the Caesar cut. The fact that you even know that <laughs> it was. Yeah, me and George Clooney had it. <laughs> 50 career games, 15 starts, 32 catches in that one touchdown. Could, could you tell me about that one touchdown? No, I really don't want to talk about it because it's a, it's humbling for everyone involved. But, you know, the thing about it, when I was at Michigan, it, it was, you know, we had Jeremy Tooman there, Aaron Shea, all, all my buddies, buddies till this, you know, even today, and all played tight end. Just a, we were really stacked to tight end, didn't realize it. Men in formation on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. And Nick Sheridan saying it's on me. So all all the tight ends there. And that one touchdown reception, I think Minnesota, right? Here? Yeah, I, I, well, I know you remember that. Yeah. Glenn yeah, Mason was, was the coach. Yeah, Mace took that one in the chops. <laughs> He's at Penn State today. I'm, I'm sure he remembers that catch. I'm sure every time that he sees me, I, I'm sure it just you know, tingles down his spine. And a big time stick that time as Joe Mendez comes into the backfield to stop Vincent Smith. And negative yards for the first time today for Vincent Smith with under 10 minutes to go here in this third quarter. 49 to 3, but all joking aside, go on and play 10 years in the, the NFL and just recently retired. And Sheridan connects. And down to the five yard line as Stokes brings it in with opportunity to actually play this year, but you decided not to. Well, I just feel that at this point in my career, I mean, I've had, since my years at Michigan, I've, I've had 
15, uh, in 15 years, I've had seven surgeries. So, you know, when is enough enough? You know, I have a couple young kids, and, you know, I want to be able to play with those guys, and, you know, enough is enough. And, it, and I knew I could have a chance to work with a guy like you, a real professional. <laughs> Here we go. It never ends. Fourth and goal. Nick Sheridan spinning. And he is cut down at the two-yard line as they go for it on fourth and goal. So Delaware State's going to be backed up at the... Their own two-yard line. Sheridan unable to get into the end zone on fourth and goal, but they lead big to the Wolverines. Now that the Mark Campbell segment of our show is over, we move on. Third quarter action. <laughs> I know one to go sure. <laughs> in, the, in the third. Jones straight up the middle to the 70-yard line. Possibly getting up to the eight of pickup of six, 49 to three. How difficult at this stage, Mark, from a player perspective, is it to maintain your focus when you're up this big against Delaware State? Well, frankly, it's not hard to do because you got all young guys in. This is really their first legitimate time to play. So for them, this is just as important as for the Delaware State guys in the game. Jones and another flag is down. And Jones not able to go anywhere as Leach comes in on the stop. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 52. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. And Leach with that face mask. It actually wasn't 52. Appeared to be 58. Heron, Brandon Heron, that reached in. And a Stafford, Texas, 49 to 3. And those are the sort of things that you know Greg Robinson is just furious about because you had him pinned back at the two, they pick up six, and then the next play, and all of a sudden here they are at the 24 yard line. Elko to the air to Charles. And Charles is wrapped up and brought back as Michael Williams comes up to make the stop. Along with Rogers, James Rogers, number 18. They just moved him this week back to cornerback. Yeah, he was playing wide receiver. You know, he, he got switched back. And, and then in the spring, he felt like, you know, I, I'd like to, uh, I'm not getting any reps at wide receiver, so why don't you put me back at defensive back? And they had been struggling defensively at the corner position. And this is a perfect opportunity for him to come in and get some reps and maybe build some trust in the coach's eyes. Elko once again to the air and a first down as Charles reels it in. And if I'm a Hornet fan right now, I'm saying, yeah, give me something, give me some balls downfield. No vertical passing game right now. All rollouts, short runs, obviously. The runs aren't going for anything. Give me a vertical passing game at this point. And from a Michigan standpoint, Tate Forcier did play that first possession. Led him on a drive, opening drive, and a touchdown. And then a running back situation. Brandon Miner with the ankle injury did not play. Carlos Brown with the concussion. Now it's two straight weeks that he didn't play. Suffered that concussion as Charles has another big catch in practice on a Tuesday. We could go this past Tuesday. So they're going to rest him up along with Miner and wait for Penn State. But Right now, you know, Nick Elko feeling a little bit more comfortable out there. Yeah, I mean, you can see that right at this point, he's probably like, all right, at halftime, he regrouped. said, all right, I have to do something here because it's not going to get any better. It's not like they're going to stop trying. So at this point, let me go out, make some throws, throw you some confidence, and he's done that so far. And a flag is down. Inside handoff to Jones having more success in the air. Big Ten fans around the globe will be able to watch their favorite football teams this fall with a Big Ten ticket. The Big Ten Network's new international streaming package, all televised Big Ten Network football games, will be available live. Low to waste. Offense number five. Fifteen yard penalty. Repeat first down. You know, speaking about Carlos Brown getting concussed, if you will, in practice. You know, these guys, they really only wear pads one day a week. But yeah. they, the day they do it, they go hard. And this was a 9 on 7 drill, which means there's nine offensive players, seven defensive players, and it's all running plays. So you know exactly what's coming. A big time to set the week's goals in the running game. Got hit by Will Campbell, the huge 
three technique or defensive tackle, one of their uh, true freshmen here that has a huge upside. Very excited to get him. Justin Wilson with the reception. They go with pads once a week. As you mentioned, that's on Tuesdays. Tuesdays is the day that they go, and then, I think you said shells on Yeah, and Wednesday, Wednesday they'll have the, everyone else, all the skill position will come out with no pads. The linemen, offensive, defensive linemen, they'll come out with pads, but they'll only wear them for the first five periods, about the first 15, 20 minutes of practice. Second now and 23 after that penalty, backing up Delaware State. Elko to the air once again to the far side. Ball loose. Delaware State recovers. And Wilson is able to recover it. And Eric Jones. Pass stripped from Eric Jones. And then Wilson right there to jump on it. It's a perfect timing to be a receiver. A little hustle towards the ball. And sometimes these things fall your way. Offensive coaches, a wide receiver coach in particular, is going to tell him to hold on to the ball, obviously, but good job to the other player for scooping it up. You know, having success in the air is Nick Elko as he finds more. And why even go back to that running game, which has gotten them absolutely nothing? They only had 17 yards up to this point in the game. And total offensive yards for Michigan, 521 for Delaware State, 117. A hundred of it through the air. So Elko out of the shotgun. Looking around. And Moore drops it. And he's dropped a couple of them. Stay tuned for the State Farm wrap-up for scores, highlights, and analysis of today's game. And Michigan Wolverine fans are feeling good about their team. LeRon Moore, the receiver, just had the drop. He's actually the track star. We talked about his numbers, but he is actually the top sprinter on their track team, indoor and outdoor. It's pretty impressive. Now, he just needs to be a little more comfortable on the football field, get used to catching footballs. And, you know, that comes with confidence, you know, with reps, experience, all those good things. So, you know, he's going to get better as he develops as a football player. Steve Watson got his hands on that one. From Colorado, Cherry Hills Village. A sophomore offense by half. How about this drive? 57 yards in the entire first half. This one 63. They were inspired by Coach LeVan, like you were with our meeting. <laughs> great story, great story. Under pressure, big hit, ball in the air. Uh, what a big time stick by Adam Patterson coming in. The junior from Columbia, South Carolina. Watch this. Mm. I really think we should get back to uh, your inspiration, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> Brent Stover and I, uh, we, and, and, and as well as yourself, we sat there and just enjoyed the stories from Coach Al LeVan when we met with him as Lickner is on the a punter and Robinson is back to receive and tap back great job by Delaware State of doing that and the punter Nick Luckner getting it down inside the 10. Economy. 49 to 3 Michigan over Delaware State. Today's Verizon wireless connection is right here. Under pressure, Denard Robinson finding Kelvin Grady for his first touchdown reception of his career. 38 yard reception. And the Wolverines with it once again in a big run peeled off by Vincent Smith and he is having a huge day in a gain of 15 now for the true freshman out of Florida. Don't hurt him with that nasty little juke on him. 16 carries 131 yards and a touchdown is long 37. He's averaging 8.2 a carry. 49 to 3. Sheridan out of the shotgun. 
took over in the second quarter for Denard Robinson. On the give to the inside. Here's Smith once again down the near sideline. Cuts back up into Hornet territory and down at the 42-yard line. Let's send it to Dave Remsen for a Prestone game break. Dave? Matt, thanks. Big upset developing in West Lafayette. Purdue already on top of Ohio State 9-7 when Joey Elliott hits Aaron Valentine. 15-yard touchdown at 16-7. Boilers. Wow, how about that one? That'll be a shocker. Ohio State 16 and Purdue one in five. Ohio State has won five of their last six meetings with Purdue and they have held the Boilers to 10.3 points per game in those six games and Purdue has 20 turnovers this season and they're tied for the second of most in the nation. Had some close games early on just one in five though and that would be something else because you know you're start talking about the landscape of the entire Big Ten in Ohio State, you know, at the top. And if that happens, the door really opens back up, shared into the air. Yeah, and Good Danny Hope, the, the head coach for the Boilermakers, I mean, he, he's got a great attitude for those guys, and he makes them feel, I think, after every week, obviously they haven't been playing too well this year, he makes them think that they have a, sh a chance to win, and they do this week. Just missing a little seam route here right down the middle. That would have been nice to get. Tough coverage. This is a perfect example where uh, Nick Sheridan could throw it on his back shoulder because he's really covered. If you throw it on his back shoulder, the receiver can make the adjustment for the ball. You know, here's the thing. You go back, you had a big win against Toledo, 52-31 for Purdue, and then at Oregon. And, you know, you almost got the sense as uh, there's a penalty flag down, pass interference. You know, the, the sense you got from Purdue is, you know, they lost at Oregon 38-36, but they almost treated it like, hey, you know, we, you know, we, we could have had that one. Pass interference. 21, defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. So, automatic first down, here it is. I don't know how you could argue that one. Just push them down. But coming to back off of that Oregon, you know, a tough loss there. And then you come home and you lose by a touchdown to Northern Illinois. You play ND tight, lose by six to Northwestern. And the Minnesota game is their one loss. They lost by 15. Other than that, they've been right there with everyone. Yeah, and they've played, uh, you know, some good football. Just haven't learned, learned to close a deal. And that will come with a new staff. You know, he's trying to, you know, imply his new methods. I know he was on the staff before, but now yep. it's his team. So, you know, sometimes it's, it takes some time, and if you lose early, you know, it can kind of steamroll into something bigger than it is. It just as if you win, you kind of build this momentum. It's the same way. Nick Sheridan on for the Michigan Wolverines trying to lead Michigan to a, a touchdown drive here. And cut down in the uh, backfield is Michael Cox. And Mike Cox in and Michigan getting an opportunity to use everyone here. Sheridan looking over. Play clock to 10. It's third and 13. Over the middle. And Mike Cox has close to a first down. It's going to bring up fourth down now. Fourth and short. Really a, a well-played scheme by uh, Kelvin McGee, the offensive coordinator for the Wolverines. They ran a few seam routes. There were two seam routes to play before. The linebackers were attacking the seams, thinking that's where the ball was in, in a man-to-man -man, uh, style of defense, and he just dumped it to the back over the middle. Fourth and short. The handoff. Cox. And does he have Does he have the first down? Very close. And they may bring out the chains. There he is, Calvin McGee, the offensive coordinator with a great call here just a minute ago. He's done a wonderful job today, a really nice job. And with their balance and pass. They haven't had to worry about the pass too much, but when they have passed, it's been some great play calling, especially on the uh, the
the naked play for the touchdown to Martel Webb. And just short on fourth down, and it's going to turn the ball over. Delaware State takes possession as they're able to get the stop there. 49 to 3, Michigan. If you want to know why you're three. Michigan still hasn't punted the ball as Delaware State comes up with a stop and you know for the Wolverines their punter Zoltan Mesco actually was the Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week second best single game punting average in school history but no need today Elko to the far side Wilson comes up with it and Wilson is going to pick up about five yards for Delaware State. Let's send it to Dave Repson for a Prestone game break. Dave? Well, Matt, it just keeps getting worse for Ohio State in West Lafayette. How about Joey Elliott? 23 yards to Aaron Valentine, his second TD of the second half. Boilermakers on top, big. How about the Boilers? They haven't beaten a top 25 team since 2003. 0 and 19. Big day there for Purdue. Uh, second down is going to bring up third down now and shorter possibly a first down for Delaware State in fourth. And Ohio State their one loss USC by three in conference Illinois easy win at Indiana with ease Wisconsin last week right 31 13 now all of a sudden Purdue you got Minnesota New Mexico State out of conference at Penn State Iowa and then they wrap things up right here at Michigan caught a little bit of a letdown today. What do you think? I think it could be a little bit. You know with Valentine especially for Purdue. He's a guy that can make huge plays if he's on Purdue's on Michigan folks. They're on on to the fourth quarter. Today's Polaris hardest working player is Brandon Graham. Three tackles couple of sacks. And then a block punt return for a touchdown. Brandon Smith had the block. He scooped it up and hustled into the end zone in Michigan on top 49 to five. Make it three. I know our board says five, but it's actually 49 to three. No safety. You know what's the most impressive part about Brandon Graham getting that touchdown and the punt return? Is the fact that he's on punt return. I mean, that means a lot that your starting defensive end, your star of your defense is on your punt return team. That says a lot about him. Another penalty. There are two fouls on the play. Holding, offense, number 67. Pass interference, defense, number 14. Those penalties offset. Repeat first down. Now you see that for sure. The true freshman, yeah, Jones. Anytime, anytime you get your hands up on the shoulder pads, it's they're going to call that every time because they're going to be able to see the jersey stretch. Really, as he gets some experience, he'll learn. If you are going to do that sort of thing, you grab around the hip. You, if you get a little little shirt around the hip, it's a lot easier to hide it from the reps. Elko to the air once again, looking for Dixon and incomplete. 49 to 3 Michigan and in the start of the fourth quarter you know, the Wolverines just so dominant in the first half and third quarter there are some things that if you're Rich Rodriguez you say hey guys you know what yeah Delaware State we understand that but didn't take advantage of some things and they did not did not score in that third quarter. They've racked up the 579 total yards. Wow. And a big run that time and close to a first down for Delaware State. Nick Williams on the run. It's going to bring up third down and short. Most net yards ever for Michigan back in 1991 against Ole Miss they had 715 
at 673 against Iowa back in 1969 in Big Ten action. And Big Ten could really be shaken a little bit today. If Ohio State loses third and short, does Delaware State get it? And if you're Iowa, 12th ranked Iowa Hawkeyes, 6 and 0, taking on the Badgers, they're 5 and 1. Hawkeyes coming off of a victory against these Wolverines last week by two, 30 28. It's going to bring up fourth and short now. You watch this play. Big 73, Will Campbell, the true freshman, 6'5", 318, one of their star recruits, absolutely stuffed the right guard. And that's what made that play. That's for a no game. He's one of the guys right now, I mean, it, you can watch some different things in the football game at this point. You really know the game's in check. Yep. I'd look at a couple guys. I want to see how they're playing. If you like to watch, uh, you know, line play, I, I'm a, I would watch 73, Will Campbell, see how he does the rest of this game. Another penalty. Delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Five-yard penalty. There's big Will Campbell from Detroit. A true freshman. Total of 10 true freshmen have played for the Wolverines this season. And 84 of the 122 players, close to 70% of Michigan's roster, freshman and sophomore. That's one of the reasons why Rich Rodriguez told us yesterday, hey, still a year or two away talking specifically about his offense about 75 percent of it in that high snap Luckner Nick Luckner able to get it away another flag down Robinson able to gather it, it appears as though it could be roughing the kicker and Luckner nine punts that was his personal tenth. foul roughing the kicker Defense, number 58, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. You know, some sloppy play right now. Brandon Heron. You know, Michigan focused, well executed in the first quarter. Second quarter looked sharp. Couple of things stood out in the first half, and Rich Rodriguez talking to Brent Stover about it. I asked you that question about, you know, keeping the focus, and although there are new guys in coming in and getting their first opportunity to extend those minutes of play. You know, whether it's lack of focus or just lack of playing time, you can see how furious Coach Rod is. Right, and making plays like that isn't going to build any confidence yeah. in you from the coaches. Eyes. Elko goes deep, has a man! Wilson finally brought down by Jones. And a big time play, Justin Wilson from Windsor, Connecticut, the red shirt freshman, comes down with it in Elko. They have been extremely successful in the air. 42 yard pickup. It's a nice play. It's a good throw by Elko. You can tell he's getting a lot more comfortable at halftime. Obviously, he's not going against the first team defense anymore. These are really third and fourth guys at this point in the game, but he looks sharp. And you know, for being a true freshman playing in the big house, this is a you know pretty good test, a testament to you know his work ethic through the week and preparation. You know, they pass for close to 150 yards to the end zone here. And tight coverage going for Wilson once again. And, and they go in the way of the true freshman Jones. And they say they've been successful in the air compared to what they've done on the ground, just 31 yards for Delaware State. That ball actually hit him in the head. I mean, you, you saw the play, you saw him twisting in the air. I think he lost track of the ball due to twisting. Typically, they throw those right to the back shoulder, and it's easier to do. But in this case, he completely lost the ball. Second and goal now for Elko. Has time. Finds Wilson, his new favorite target. And Wilson is down just shy of the five yard line. It's going to bring up now. Third down, third and goal. Now you can get free programming alerts on your mobile phone. Be the first to know when your favorite coaches and players will appear on the Big Ten Network. Just text MISH to 20284 or log on to BigTenNetwork.com slash alerts. Message and data rates may apply. Third down and goal. Elko changing it up. Play clock at five. Now down to four. Elko gets it at two. Looks to the near side, in and out of the hands. 
And right there, and we have seen Leron Moore drop at least four balls today in this one right there. Yeah, and I don't think he would have scored anyways, but dropping the balls, I mean, that's really a sign of confidence. It means, because talking to Coach Levana yesterday, he talked about he did have great hands. He talked about that he did all, do all those things right. He just needed to put together on a more consistent basis. But watching him out here today, you can tell he's got a lack of confidence right now. On for their second field goal attempt. And that one is right through the uprights as Riley Flickinger gets his second field goal. It's 49-6 here in this fourth quarter. Forty-nine to six. After the twenty-four-yard field goal, uh, Flickinger, his second field goal of the game, coming in having just made one here on the season. Michigan Stadium, and the Michigan fans will see their team and move on to a five-and-two mark. Riley Fuckinger sends it in the air. And that one by Roundtree is going to be dropped and scooped back up as he is out of bounds now. And Michigan's going to take over and set it down to Brent. An interesting story, uh, a tragic story, but also one that uh, has had a, a happy a turn of events for the Michigan program. Richard freshman guard Elliot Miller, almost two years ago on Christmas Eve, he was involved in a car accident that killed his father and his girlfriend, left his brother Brock, who's 25 years old now, in a wheelchair. And Coach Rodriguez has kind of made Brock part of the team. Certainly, he's been an inspiration to the entire program. And Brock's a guy that refused to accept the fact he wouldn't be able to walk. He's now able to do so with the help of braces. In fact, because of that, Brock is known as Miracle Miller. And he and Rich Rodriguez have promised that someday they're going to run out of the tunnel onto the big house field together. And Coach Rodriguez telling me just the other day, Brock was in the Michigan weight room lifting and getting a workout in. And he pops in from time to time, and he's at most of the games. Pretty impressive stuff. An unbelievable story on their way to Midnight Mass. In fact, and. Uh, you see uh, the brother looking on as a younger brother is playing. David Cohn now on a quarterback. 578 total yards of offense, and another flag is down. Bundle of penalties here now on this day as Cohn is on at a Statesboro, Georgia. Ineligible receiver downfield. Number 46 on the offense was covered and went downfield on the pass. Five yard penalty, repeat second down. So that's actually on the wide receiver. It means the tight end's down on the line of scrimmage and the wide receiver is also on the line of scrimmage. If that's the case, the tight end cannot run out for a pass. Now, if the, if the wide receiver was off the line of scrimmage or vice versa, there's no issue. But being that the receiver was on the line, it's a penalty. Fourth quarterback on the day. Tate Forcier came out, played the first possession. First series was led to a touchdown, and then that was it. And Denard Robinson played into the second quarter before Nick Sheridan was brought in. And here's Cohn and a reception and a first down. Savoy on the reception. A Rotel Velveeta combination of the game because you can't win without the perfect partner after the 21 yard pickup and talking about the running backs and how about that day for Vincent Smith Michael Cox touchdown A little burst 37 yards 57 yards on the carry for Michael Cox and a rushing touchdown for Michigan who leads the Big Ten in rushing touchdowns. 
you watch this and you just think that Michigan has a stable of young running backs who are making plays for them right now. The, the guys that Rich Rod has re recruited now are, are coming, coming in and playing, and you have to see there's a different level of speed. Fifth rushing touchdown on the day. Michael Cox with the touchdown. They have 20 now on the season on the ground. Wolverines dominant. 100. Phillips HD player of the game, Vincent Smith, the true freshman. First rushing touchdown, his first 100 yard game. 17 carries, 163 or 66 yards, Mark. Yeah, impressive numbers from a true freshman. A, a, just a wonderful platform for him to come out and play today with, you know, a defense that gives up a lot of rushing yards. To his credit, he made a, a lot of yards after contact and a lot of backdoor cuts. That's where he got a lot of his long runs. He's been impressive. He's an exciting guy to watch. 656 total yards today offensively for Michigan Michael Cox 50 70 yard touchdown to run three plays 72 yards 120 taken away on the clock and sending this one back to Tarpley it's 56 to 6 and Michigan leading by 50 and you look at the Big Ten standings of course big story on the day is Purdue Right now leads Ohio State, Iowa at Wisconsin leads and really opening up the door potentially for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Yeah, I mean, with Iowa being Wisconsin right now, and let's face it, man, I, I, Wisconsin is not Wisconsin without John Clay. I mean, he's the reason why they're the leading yeah. rushing team in the Big Ten. They're not the same club without him because all of a sudden play action doesn't work as well. You can't get your tight ends involved. Iowa has won 10 consecutive games overall, starting 6-0 this year. And four victories to close out the 2009 season. And a big run here for Delaware State. And Delaware State with the first down. And another impressive run by Nick Williams. Another thing about Iowa, as you watch them, you can tell, if, you, if you're a fan who likes to really watch the game and not just look for explosive plays, you can tell that they're the type of team that you have to beat them. They're not going to, they're not yeah. going to lose the game themselves. You have to beat them. A very solid team. Talked to Rich Rodriguez about that Iowa Hawkeye team, and, and that was one of the things that he was talking about, that they just, they just don't make mistakes. This is a, you know, Hawkeye team that has won 10 straight, as we mentioned, possibly going on to 11. And last time they won 10 or more consecutive games, folks, it was a long time ago. And they won 20 straight. And the Hawkeyes from 1920 through 1923. And the last Big Ten team to record 10 consecutive wins, that was Ohio State. And they opened up 10 and 0 during the 2007 season. Nick Elko on under nine minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. 56 to six, stopped in the backfield. And Greg Banks comes in, the junior from Denver, and he gets that tackle for a loss. Another guy they knew was going to get a lot of playing time today was Greg Banks. And, you know, they want to see some things out of him to see how he responds to uh, getting more playing time. But they think he has a big upside. So, uh, you know, keep your eye on him the rest of the way out. Third down now and 15 for Delaware State. Elko once again from the shotgun. Inside handoff to Nick Williams. Williams back to the line of scrimmage and more. And before he is finally brought down. With eight minutes remaining here in this fourth quarter and 656 total yards. Just 52 yards on the ground for Delaware State. Is this a hard game from a coaching perspective to get a gauge on uh, where you are as a team after these two tough losses? You, you talked earlier about how it's a good, good game for a young team to have just to kind of feel good about yourself. But when you pull back away, there's certainly going to be enough that and the coaching staff is going to be able to point out and say, hey, guys, you know, right. here, here are a couple of things. Yeah, and there always is in every game. And yeah. it, 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 let's be honest. Some of it's actually needed to be said and some of it's not needed to be said, but they're going to say it anyways because they have to say something that's going to inspire the club to play better. 
Luckner on for his 10th punt. Let's send it to Dave Remsen in a press zone game break. Dave? Thank you, Matt. It is over between Iowa and Wisconsin. The Hawkeyes still unbeaten. Amari Spave comes up with a nice pick there on Scott Tolzien. 11 straight wins for the Hawks dating back to last year. They take it 20 to 10. Thanks, Dave. And now for the Iowa Hawkeyes. They move to a perfect 3 and 0 in Big Ten play. They are 7 and 0 overall. 3 and 0 on the road. 4 and 0 at home. And they are paying attention, folks, to what's going on there with Purdue and Ohio State. Stay tuned for the State Farm wrap up for scores, highlights, and analysis of all of today's games and the Big Ten. And a lot going on with Iowa knocking off Wisconsin and Purdue and Ohio State. And what will be the outcome there? And then for Michigan, as you would expect, they've just come out, they've been dominant. David Cohn hands it off on the inside to Michael Cox, who picked up a rushing touchdown, 57-yard run. And Iowa remaining undefeated, and what a year the Hawkeyes are having. 7-0, you see the other teams that are undefeated in FBS. Alabama, Boise State, Cincinnati, Florida, Texas, TCU, and Kansas. Yeah, the thing about Iowa, if, if Ricky Stanzi, their quarterback, if he can be a little even better with the ball than he has been, I mean, look out, because they're a team, like we've talked about, that could be a pretty formidable on all fronts, tough defense, great linebacker play, great defensive back play. They have an offensive line that's led by uh, Bulaga, their stud left tackle. They really just need to be smarter with the ball, and that rides on Stanzi's shoulders. And if they are like that, I mean, who knows what can happen? They could really make a run at this thing. Michael Cox, seven carries, 66 yards. That is shotgun with 540 remaining. And the rest of the schedule for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And a big stick there. Reyes and it brought down. You have at Michigan State, Indiana Northwestern, at Ohio State, and then in Minnesota. And already the bowl eligible teams well Iowa and they knew that actually coming into today's action because of that sixth win two more road games for the Hawkeyes at Michigan State and at Ohio State and Michael Cox will pick up a couple of yards there and he's going to bring up third down <laughs> Things are setting up for the Hawkeyes. Sure looks like they are, but you know, honestly playing at the shoe is a tough place to play. You know, Sparty down in East Lansing is a tough place to play. So they still have their hands full, but I tell you what, it looks like all their ducks are in a row. 56 to six, 430 left here in the fourth quarter. Cone goes down the middle. Reyes reels it in. It's a first down and Ricky Reyes with big smile. Anytime you go man to man defensively, you got to worry about the middle of the field. A great throw there. Yeah. Nice and easy catch. And he's only got green grass in front of him. If he cleans up, catches that ball clean, he has a better chance of taking it to the end zone. As you would expect on a day like today, 11 of Michigan receivers with catches. Michael Cox brought down by Ahmad Harris out of Cypress, Texas. Man, this has been an impressive day on the ground for the Michigan Wolverines. They've run for 439 yards. They've passed for 266, 707 total yards. And down to the two-yard line, Michael Cox. How about this one, Matt? 34 first downs for Michigan today. And a, another Michigan record. For net total yards, it was 7-15 against Ole Miss in 1991. 718 
total yards. 452 folks on the ground. Cohn. Hands it off. Touchdown Wolverines. Michael Cox with his second touchdown of the day. Sixty two to six on for the extra point. Sixty three to six. Big Ten Network football is presented by the United States Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the Marines. And brought to you in part by Rotel and Velveeta. Try Rotel and Velveeta's famous queso dip. The ultimate game day snack. And by Phillips HD. Made to feel, made to amaze. Phillips HD. Nine total touchdowns, eight offensively. And then Brandon Graham off of the block punt. And the Michigan Wolverines up 63 to 60. Right to kick it off once again. Tarpley and Moore back for Delaware State. And for Delaware State, playing for the first time against Michigan, first time ever to the big house and the largest crowd that they've ever played in front of. Tarpley takes it. Tarpley pass at 20 and down to the 24-yard line. And Nick Elko and the Delaware State will come out and work from right there. Today's Land Rover Extraordinary Defensive Play of the Game. Here it is. Great job by Graham. Great block, first of all, by Smith. Good job crossing the foot. Great job by Graham picking up the ball for the easy score. 24 Six. career sacks for him. Yeah, he was sensational today. <laughs> There's nobody able to handle him coming in off the edge. Voted team MVP by his teammates in 2008. And speaking of coming in off of the edge, here they go once again. Michigan to Wolverines with Adam Patterson. He's played well. Micah Brown comes in, number 17. In high school, Micah Brown had 2,000 two yards passing and 800 yards rushing. Well, they'll need that. <laughs> I think it's a little too, a little, yeah, but a little too late for that. This point. You know, Nick Elko showed a little bit of something as they get back into MEAC play. And obviously, Coach LeVan understood exactly how difficult things were going to be here at the Big House for his team. Football fans, you can create your own football highlight reels each week with a Big Ten football mashup presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Go to mashup.big. 10network.com right now to compile your favorite plays and share them with your friends. <laughs> Understanding that and play the Delaware team pretty tough. Games like this, you know, for Delaware State, they go back and say, hey, you know what, through the air, we, we did okay. You know, 151 yards after what happened in the first half, just a tough spot to be in. Big time tackle there. And Michigan has been dominant as one would expect. And Michigan's obviously a young ball club at this point, but Delaware State is probably even younger. They got a lot of freshmen and sophomores on that team, aside from a couple of senior seniors on the offensive line. Aside from that, a really relatively young team. You know, they're Anthony Glaude, they're their star quarterback, you know, completes 58% of his passes. They obviously missed him today. They have a true freshman in Elko to come in, struggled in the first half, as did everybody on their club. Uh, came out in the second half and actually looked pretty well, uh, looked pretty good. So uh, I mean, that's got to build some confidence for them in the future. Well, coming in on the day with 15 rushing touchdowns, 
And boy, they really added to that on this day as Robinson is brought down. What's scary about that, man, is their two best backs didn't even play yeah. today. Yeah. And that was a good thing for Michigan that they didn't have to play Brandon Miner and Carlos Brown. And they expect them both back next week, Penn State. <laughs> They're going to need it. Yeah. 63 to 6 after two very tough losses on the road at Michigan State. And then last week, losing by two at Iowa. And Michigan comes home. They go out of conference, play an FCS school, and just dominant throughout. And Jack Kennedy on the carry. Kennedy, the fifth quarterback, used. And that's going to do it. 63 to 6, Michigan with the victory today. Tate Forcier came out, played one series. Denard Robinson played through a little bit of the second quarter. Nick Sheridan came in. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest, this was the best case scenario for Coach Rod and Michigan staff and Michigan's team today. Tate got to play as one. His one drive, it went really well. They score. Let's get him out. Let's get him healthy for next week. He's got the shoulder and the concussion. Let's make sure he's right. Denard comes in for the most extensive playing time he's had of the year. And, and the, at the end of the first half, he was three for four with two touchdowns, a couple of good reads, and some great runs. And then you get Nick Sheridan in, a guy who hasn't played that much. For the second time this season, six rushing touchdowns as we send it down to Brent Stoker. Brent? Well, Coach, good all-around win. Good opportunity yeah. to see a lot of different guys. Yeah, we played uh, just about everybody except the guys. We won the red shirt, the freshmen, and they got a chance to play in front of the big house, and our crowd was terrific today. Who were some of the guys that stood out in your mind? Well, really pleased with our quarterbacks early. I thought we did a nice job up front, and then defense, I thought our defensive line did another good job solidly up front, but it really is overall good effort. A couple of hard fought losses the last two weeks. How much fun is it to come out to get a win, to see guys on the sideline, yeah. seeing the younger guys? Well, it's a lot of fun to be back home, and then to see some of our guys that have been in the program, committed an awful lot the last several years, get a chance to play in front of this crowd was tremendous. Congratulations on the win. Okay, thank you, appreciate it. Coach Rodriguez now 5-2, perfect at home, 5-0. and oh. Penn State is next week, folks. Running backs more than likely back. And Michigan will continue to try to roll. They win it today, 63-60 for Mark Campbell. Brent Stover, I'm Matt Devlin. Let's send it to Dave Rebson in our network studios. Matt, thanks. We have an upset brewing in West Lafayette. Purdue on top of Ohio State 26-18, but the Buckeyes on the move. Let's join Wayne Larrabee and Chris Martin. Fryer takes off. And a nice tackle made by Jason Warner. Tripped him up just inside the 50 of the 46-yard line of Purdue. And it's third down Ohio State. This is a really good play by Warner because he comes in for the blitz, but he's able to disengage right there disengage with the offensive lineman to make the tackle on prior. Werner missed two tackles on 